Okay, my name is Mark Gittenstein. Uh, I'm special counsel at the American law firm of Mayor Brown. Uh, I just finished uh, a year ago as U.S. Ambassador here in Romania, which I had the honor and pleasure of serving in that position for three and a half years. Uh, it was the most enjoyable experience I've had in my professional career. I was trained as a lawyer. I uh, came to Washington over 40 years ago, Washington, D.C. Uh, I had grown up in a small town in the southern part of the United States in Alabama, a very remote village of 3,000 people, uh, very distant from the U.S. capital. Uh, which was Washington, D.C., of course, and I came of age in the 1960s in the middle of the Civil Rights Movement in the United States where some of the heroic figures that you've heard of, Dr. Martin Luther King and Robert and John Kennedy, the President of the United States and the, and the Attorney General of the United States were taking very courageous acts and changing the direction of our country, especially on the issues of race and civil rights, and I was inspired by that and wanted to become involved in, in making my country a better place. But I came from a very remote area, a place where there were not many opportunities. Fortunately, I had a father and mother who encouraged me to take big risks and to move ahead. And I went away for my high school years in the northern part of Alabama and then to college in North Carolina at Duke University. And I came to Washington in 1968 to law school. Uh, I didn't know anybody really um, in the political system, but I was determined to have an impact. And uh, as I went through law school, I became acquainted at very low levels with people in the United States Senate uh, on the staff level, and I got a very good job coming right out of law school. Uh, but I still didn't know how to make a difference and how to get ahead, and fortunately, uh, I had very good mentors. Uh, important senators, and one of the senators I got to know was a very young senator, uh, Joe Biden, who was, at the time he was elected to the Senate, was only 29 years old. You had to be 30 years old in order to serve as a senator. When I met Joe Biden in 1976, <clears throat> he had been in the Senate uh, maybe a two years, and uh, was uh, it was a big risk to work for him, but he inspired me and said, to me, you know, Mark, uh, you're a bright young guy and you have a chance, but you'll have to work very hard to have an impact. So uh, I did that and uh, it was a big chance to go to work for him because he was the least important member of the Senate at the time. He was, you know, the Senate works as a seniority system. The old longer you've been in the Senate, the more important you are. And he was, you know, barely old enough to be a senator. Uh, and uh, I was, you know, I was two years younger than he was when we met. Uh, I was in my 30s and he was maybe 32, 30, 33. I think I was 30 when I met him and he was 32, 33 years old. So we were very young. And we both sort of grew up together and we taught each other. And what, I, what inspired me about him is he took big risks for things he really believed in, which he taught me that I needed to do too. And so I became very involved with him on issues related to the selection of judges in the federal system and the application of the rule of law and fighting corruption. And uh, after I worked for him for 13 years, I had to make more money in order to send my kids to college, so I went to a law firm and worked there for 20 years. But I continued to be friends with Joe Biden, and I represented him when he was being considered for vice president of the United States by Barack Obama. And we were fortunate enough for him to choose, uh, for, for Obama to choose Biden. And of course, uh, from that, I eventually became the U.S. ambassador. But I actually originally was going to have another job uh, in the administration. And uh, unfortunately, I had offended some people uh, in the Democratic Party political establishment, and I was not considered for that job. And Biden came to me one day and he said, do you want to be an ambassador? And I said I had never considered such a thing. And uh, we eventually settled on Romania, which, as you all know, was uh, uh, a fortunate choice for me because uh, my family is Romanian. Uh, I'm uh, the first Romanian-American ever to hold this job. And uh, when I came here 
I fell in love with the country, which I, by the way, had never visited before. And uh, I, I found Romanians very warm, uh, but facing significant challenges, and I felt I could make a difference, especially in the area where I had expertise, the, the operation of the judiciary, the application of the rule of law, uh, the, uh, uh, the notion that uh, transparency is important for building democracies and markets. But I was particularly interested in the work that Julian was doing and other people in the NGO movement who were taking big risks in order to make changes here in this country. And I hope, thought it that, <clears throat> that I could contribute to that. And uh, as you probably know, since I've left being ambassador, I've continued to remain uh, involved in these projects because I love Romania. I think Romania has tremendous potential, but in particular I love Romanian people uh, because of their uh, commitment to the country and to their families uh, and, uh, and the incredible courage and stamina that Romanian people have in the face of very difficult problems that they've faced. I've learned over several millennia. If you go back to even the Roman period, uh, you know, outside countries have come in and taken advantage of the beautiful resources and the incredible talents of these people and of Romanians. And uh, it takes a lot of determination and uh, confidence in yourself to overcome these problems. And Romanians have, have got a distance to go, but uh, I have tremendous hope for them. Now, Julian asked me to sort of speak to the issue of, uh, of what I've learned in all of this. Uh, and I think what I have learned is a lesson that I learned from my father, which is that if you put your mind on what you want to accomplish, and you believe, if you look in the mirror every day and say, I'm somebody that can accomplish this thing, I can make a difference, that uh, just that spirit, when you face any problem, will get you through the day and help you uh, accomplish your goal. I was talking to one of my law partners a few minutes ago before I started this interview and he said, I asked him what he thought, he's just joined our firm, he was a very successful lawyer um, in another law firm and he came to work for us and I said, what is the quality that best exemplifies your success in law practice? And he said, persistence, never give up. And uh, I think I would like to believe that that's what I brought to this and that's why in the issues that I've become engaged in in Romania is I think unswerving persistence to the goal of what you're trying to accomplish is critical. So if I was, if you were to ask me what I've learned from 40 years of doing what I've been doing, it would be that. Uh, so it's been an honor to engage in this interview and I hope you find it useful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that good? Perfect. Yeah, okay.